Good day, everyone. This is Karen B. And today I wanted to make a video instructing you on how to measure, manually measure the magnetic declination for your area in order for you to help us sort of try to decode magnetic declination and see if there's if there's any deception going on there, if there's something we can glean from from basically trying to verify the information that is given to us regarding the world magnet world magnetic model. What is magnetic declination? Magnetic de declination is the difference between the point that the sun revolves around, right, which um, is considered to be geo geographic north or or where the pole is, the physical center of the earth, and where the magnetics point, where your compass points to, which is points to the magnetic pole, which is not the same as geographic north. Magnetic north and geographic north are in two different places, and the magnetic declination is the difference between those two places, and it is the amount for which you must adjust your, your compass reading or your or any sort of, you know, navigation settings that you're that you're using to navigate. It's the it's the amount by which you need to adjust your heading to ensure that you are going in the correct direction and get to the place that you need to get to. Now, lately, there has been a lot of um, speculation about whether or not magnetic declination is actually a real thing. Maybe it's not a real thing and they only use it to to uh, hide the deception of the globe. However, um, this can't be true because when it comes to navigating flying planes, ships, um, survivalists who may be using a compass and a map to navigate their way out of wilderness where their life depends on it, every all of these things, you know, um, commerce, people's lives and commerce involving people's lives, all of these things depend on on having an accurate magnetic model of the earth and knowing the magnetic declination for the area in which they are traveling. Here we go. The different arrows on a USGS topographic me map mean. Okay, so here, um, this is a, an illustration of the difference. So this star right here is true north. Uh, it's also associated with Polaris. As we all know, Polaris, it does make a very, very tiny, tight circle, but it always stays over the same phys physical location of the Earth. That is also associated with um, geographic north. So that is the true center and the point around which we believe the sun to go around. So magnetic north right here, this is where your compass is going to point because your compass doesn't point to north. The compass needle is a highly sensitive ferromagnetic piece of metal that is following the flux lines that are, that are um, being put off by Earth's magnetic field. And the flux lines are just that, in flux. They move. Um, this is why every once in a while, uh, they on average of five years, the magnetic model must be updated and magnetic declination must be updated for different airports across the plane and also for ships and sailors and maps. They need to know the average amount which their location um, drifts off of magnetic north so that if they're using an outdated map, they know which magnetic model that it is attached to. Uh, and so they need to account for that, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so definitely magnetic uh, declination is a thing. So how do we measure our, our magnetic declination? So what we're going to do is we're going to provide you with the tools on how to me measure your own magnetic declination. There's a couple of ways to do it. There's a, there's a quick and easy way, and then there's a longer way, which could possibly provide... Um, more accurate information and also might provide us with information that might, you know, give us a hint as to where there might be some deception in the world magnetic model and how it works. There are two norths, true or geographic north and magnetic north. The magnetic declination is something important to learn. To measure the magnetic declination in real life, we will need a compass, a protractor, and a gnomon. We point the needle to north and we orientate the protractor to north as well. Please bear in mind that this is magnetic north. 
to know the magnetic declination, we will need to know where the true north is. To do that, we place the gnomon in the center of the protractor. Then we start marking the shadow. The shortest shadow of the day is the true north. The difference between this shadow and the magnetic north is the magnetic declination. Sometimes it's hard to know where the shortest shadow is because the shadow could appear equal during a few minutes because the shadow is not always sharp. So in this case, you can mark the beginning of the shortest shadow and the end of the shortest shadow and put a mark in the middle and measure the angle from the middle mark to the magnetic north. That should be accurate. So if you need to measure the azimuth of the sun in real life, all you need to do is measure the angle between the contrary side of the shadow and north, then add your magnetic declination angle. Remember, the sun is always on the contrary side of the shadow. So for a closer look, here's the United States with the magnetic declination uh, lines of flux laid over top of it. And what you're going to do is you're going to lay out your protractor and you're going to align the zero point or north of the protractor with the magnetic north that you measure with your compass. So line that zero up with where your compass points initially. You'll have your protractor level and flat and the zero point of the protractor will be facing north, magnetic north to be precise, and then with your gnomon in the center, you need to record the sun's shadow as it crosses your location from before solar noon to just after solar noon to make sure that you get the entire time of the shortest shadow recorded to get the most precise angle. So again, line your protractor up with the zero point pointing towards magnetic north. Right, get your compass, align it up with magnetic north. Leave it there, and that's where you're going to let it set while you record the sun's path. In my earlier clips, you see me using a sundial compass, which is a sundial and a compass combined. You don't need that. You can just use a compass, as you see Zach here doing when he is lining his protractor up to magnetic north, just using a compass. And once you are done recording your sun's shadow, you will end up with something like this. You can see here at the bottom, the black pen marks is the marking of the sun shadow. This is a summertime reading, which is why the shadow is so short and so close to center of the protractor. I do have here a wintertime reading where the shadow is a little bit longer, but you can see there, you just record the shadow for a, about an hour, I'd say, and you just mark the beginning of the short shadow to the end of the short shadow, and then you divide that in two, and that is your true north solar noon, and that will give you your magnetic declination. You want to make sure that you record all the data that goes along with your protractor here. Okay, you can, and all your data can be actually on the sheet of paper. So you print it out, print out your protractor, mark your, you know, set it up, mark your shadows for, you know, it's probably for about a, like an hour, half hour. You don't have to start way back here like I did, you know, start closer to solar noon. This is where it, where it helps to, you know, cheat a little bit and check when your solar noon is. So you're going to start like maybe a half hour before that and then go until you start seeing that dot get away from that from that circle from the smallest circle right the smaller the circle the shorter the shadow on your protractor so when you start seeing that dot get away from that smallest circle then you can stop recording you know you've gone past solar noon and then just on your right here on your protractor sheet um, I'd like you to make sure you take these notes the location the latitude and longitude of where you are um, you don't have to do this at your house. And in fact, if you don't want to give away the location of your house or have that be, you know, out there in the, you know, in internet land, then just don't do it at your house. Do it at a local park or somewhere close, you know, somewhere where you can do it. Um, if you do it at your house, try to take your measurements away from any sort of electrical lines that may be in and around your house, you know, underground electrical wires. Um, by your, you know, by your meter boxes or anything like that. 
Try to make sure you're like 12 to 15 feet away if possible from anything like that so that those things are not influencing the, the very sensitive needle on the compass and giving you a false reading. Also, the, you want to go and find the given magnetic declination for your location from USGS or you can go to magnetic-declination.com, uh, which is right here is what it looks like. Okay. And you put in your location and it tells you what your magnetic declination is. And if you can find it from multiple places, that's good. It's always good to use multiple sources for data. The other thing you need to record, and this, this I've already gone over, the sun's shadow movement over your location for the duration of just before to just after solar noon. This will ensure that you record the time period with the shortest shadow. Okay, so tools and materials you'll need, the protractor on a level flat surface, a compass or a sundial compass, a pen to mark the shadow length, and then, of course, the data you have to get, all this data. And then from there, we can, we can take a look and we can take that data that we gather and we can then test it against what they give us. We can see if what they're giving us is accurate information or... Possibly, if we get enough people doing this from different points around the plane, then we can maybe perhaps uncover some sort of pattern of discrepancy that lets us see maybe what's going on, or if there is something to see. We could possibly verify all the data that they give us. It is entirely possible that we all do this and everything comes out to be just as they say it is. Um, it's also entirely possible that we uncover some sort of pattern where possibly um, the the very center has been sort of cut out and, and pinched off. And maybe we can measure some sort of pattern in, in the discrepancy that can let us know that maybe the center is a little bit wider. There's a little bit more room in there for, for <clears throat> possibly for land to be hidden or for ships to travel along the coastline of these northernmost um, continents without actually laying physical you know, getting line of sight to these islands and therefore never reporting they exist. Who knows? Um, maybe we'll find nothing, but it's always good to do things like this so that um, the everyday people, people like you, who are interested in learning the truth about the realm we live in, get an opportunity to become more intimately uh, knowledgeable, have a more intimate, to have a more intimate knowledge of the realm that you live in by studying the, the lights in the sky, how they work, you know, the electromagnetic properties of the realm. I think we can all agree that we live in an electromagnetic realm. So um, this, I think, is one of the keys to finding out how this place works. So I hope you have enjoyed the video. I hope that you get something from it. And I hope that you will join us in trying to decode the realm and measure the magnetic declination in your area so that we can put some more pieces of the puzzle together. All right, cheers.